Good morning. Amen. This is Pastor Delphine Crutcher here at New Nation Worship Center. Thank you for joining us this morning. It is a beautiful, sunny day in, here in Cortez, Colorado. And uh, we just thank you uh, for worshiping with us this morning. We just, we're just enjoying the presence of God. Amen. We thank him. We thank him for his blessing. We thank him for his love. And so, Father, we just worship you today. We honor you. We magnify your holy name. For, Lord, you are worthy. You are worthy. Lord, it is you that have made heaven and earth. And so, Father, we thank you as your creation. We thank you that you have enabled us, as your word says, to come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy. So, Lord, this morning, we ask for your mercy. We ask for your continued grace. We just pray right now, Father, for those that are viewing, Lord, that may be sick in their bodies, may be experiencing uh, any emotion that has them hopeless, may be discouraged in despair, we pray that this morning's word will encourage them. The worship, Lord God, will lift them, lift their spirits, Lord God. So, Lord, we just praise you this morning. We thank you again. We honor you again for who you are. You are a mighty God. You're a holy God. You're full of compassion. Your love is from everlasting to everlasting. You are God. Lord, we thank you for sending your son, Jesus. He was the one who was, who is, and who is to come. So we honor you, Lord. We honor your son, Jesus, who is sitting at the right hand this morning. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit that you left with us to lead us, to guide us, to comfort us, giving us peace that surpasses all understanding. So bless your people today. May they continue to walk in faithfulness and stand firm in the calling and in the hope of their salvation. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, this morning, <laughs> We are going to continue, Pastor Rod is going to continue the teaching series on freedom, amen? We, I, don't, I don't think he intended to do uh, a freedom series, but he, he, he started and just continued because we just sensed that the Holy Spirit wanted us to emphasize the freedom that we have in Christ, amen? So it's for freedom. Amen, that we are free in Jesus. So we're going to begin this morning with um, uh, No Longer Slaves. Thank you, Lord. You have ruined me. With a melody, you surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to thee. I am a child of God. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. 
Love has called my name I've been born again Into a family Your blood flows through my veins I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God, I no longer a slave to be. I am a child of God. I no longer a slave to be. I am a child of God. I no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh. Over you and your family. 
Hallelujah. Thank you. Yes, Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon Be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. 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 Oh, 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 oh,
And so we're going to prayerfully consider the curriculum that we're going to use. And so when we do so, we want to invite you to join us as we study the, the curriculum. And when we study this curriculum, we'll be able to, you'll be able hopefully to download notes. You'll be able to view the videos. And as you view the videos, we'll, um, after a week or so, we'll have a time of discussion, okay? We will have a time of discussion on the curriculum. And so this is to help us grow, amen? The Word of God tells us to grow, amen? To grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we have to continue to stay in His Word. As I said, we are being prayerful about some of the curriculum that we will be using. And so um, for those that are present, we're still going to be gathering we still want to uh, be available for those that are local to make sure that we are here for you. Um, after our Sunday services, we um, pray. Um, we do hands-on, amen. We, we, we believe in anointing and, and prayer, deliverance, all of that. So, um, but anyway, for those that would like to support us in this ongoing work that we are doing, we're simply obeying. The Great Commission, where Jesus told us to go and make disciples. And so if you'd like to support us in the work that we are doing here in Cortez, and we are prayerfully wanting to reach surrounding areas, you know, Mancos, Dolores, Toyop, Durango, uh, you can uh, support us in any way if you're viewing. And this ministry is, um, is blessing you, New Nation. WC4SQR at gmail.com. Also, um, if you would like to mail an offering, the address here at the church is New Nation Worship Center, 500 North Washington Street, Cortez, Colorado, 81321. And so um, we are fortunate that we do not have a big overhead, which I know has unfortunately impacted and hurt many churches but we are thankful that we have what we have amen the word of god says if we're faithful in little he will bless us with much so we just we're not looking for the much but we just want to be faithful what he's with what he's already put in our hands and so we are looking forward to those things that are coming that we might be able to expand and reach more souls for Christ. And as I said, we're looking at those those offerings or whatever you give. Also, looking at that helping us to do advertising and reach in by other means. When you have a few folks who like to go door to door, but how many of you know? For those who may not feel comfortable going door to door or don't have time, there's other methods. Amen. We'll do that door to door. But we'll also reach people in other means, other by other means as well. So we thank you again. We love you. We just pray again for those um, um, that are just having. We, I just sense that you know there's a lot of distractions, and there are many maybe that are struggling with their faith. Okay, because there's so much division in the body of Christ. And so it, sometimes that can be discouraging. But we want to encourage you this morning. Amen. We want to encourage you. If you stay in the word of God, God is faithful. Amen. God is faithful. He's faithful to his word. He is not a liar. His word is true. So we thank you again. Pastor Rod is preparing to come. Um, we will pray and ask that you be in prayer for us, and we just again thank you. So, Father, we just give you praise for this day. We love you. We thank you for the blessing that you have bestowed upon your people. We thank you for their faithfulness. Lord, we just ask that you will go into their hearts, go into their minds, and dear God, I just ask in the name of Jesus that they will prepare their hearts and their minds for the word this morning. Pray for Pastor Rod as he comes, that he will be anointed by the Spirit to teach.
to teach and that we receive your word in Jesus name amen 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 well, praise the Lord thank you Lord for worship this morning and you know we worship the Lord with music we worship the Lord even with our tithes and offerings we are in worship right now and so now we're getting ready for the word. I hope you're ready for the word. Those in the room and those who are watching. And uh, I'm, uh, I don't want to use the word excited uh, when it comes to the this particular message. But it's something that we need. We'll talk about uh, maybe difficult for some. But anyway, we've got to teach on the word of God. we got to get God's word on the matter. But uh, before that, <clears throat> I'm going to squiggle a little more. going to do our uh, <clears throat> church Monday of the week, then we're going to pray, and then we're going to get into the Word. We're going to cover as much as uh, we can today, and again, this is going to be part one of this, and I'll announce the title again here in a minute. If you saw it on the Facebook announcement, but uh, we will um, get that uh, going here in just a moment. But anyway, I want to read the church Monday of the week. I mean, you know, it's good to laugh in the house of God, the kingdom of God, and this is called The Deal. And it says a young boy had just gotten his driving permit. He asked his father, who was a minister, if they could discuss the use of the car. His father took him to his study and said to him, I'll make a deal with you. You bring your grades up, study your Bible um, a little and get your hair cut. We'll talk about it. After about a month, the boy came and, and again asked his father if they could discuss the use of the car. They again went to the father's study where his father said, Son, I've been real proud of you. You have brought your grades up, you've studied your Bible diligently, and you didn't but you didn't but you didn't get a haircut. The young man waited a moment and replied, You know, Dad, I've been thinking about that. You know, Samson had uh, long hair, uh, Moses had long hair, Noah had long hair, and even Jesus had long hair. To which his father replied, Yes. And they walked everywhere they went. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So, I mean, you know, it's good to laugh in the house of the Lord. So, anyway, uh, we're going to pray. And we're starting a series. I don't know how long this At least it's, it's going to be at least two parts. Then we're going to start with number one today. And uh, we're talking about freedom uh, from hate, racism, and bigotry. And, and uh, Pastor Delphine said, my wife said that, we did not, or I didn't intend to necessarily do a series on freedom, but you know, sometimes the Lord will have you walk into something and then uh, next thing you know, you're doing it. And I didn't realize it. I think it was Friday or Saturday and uh, realized, wow, we're doing a lot of these last few weeks of messages are about freedom since, uh, you know, 4th of July and maybe the spirit of freedom is in the air and God wants his people to be free. So today we're going to start talking about hate, racism, and bigotry. And before I pray, I know this is a very difficult subject, even as soon as people see the words hate, as soon as people see the words racism, as soon as the people hear the word bigotry or see it, you know, certain emotions and feelings start coming up, and maybe you automatically uh, said, you know, well, I don't want to hear about that. I don't, I don't want to talk about it. I just want to hear positive stuff, and I don't want to talk about that. And uh, I don't want to deal with that. But it's something we have to deal with because the Bible has a lot to say about this subject. And so we're going to pray. And those who are ready to receive Jesus say, He that hath an ear, let him hear. And so hopefully we'll hear what the Spirit of the Lord says. So I think uh, it's safe to say that in the current day that we live in, this is something we need to talk about in the body of Christ, the children of God, the children of light. We must be able to talk about this subject and deal with it because we are the light of the world. So let's pray. So Father, we come before you this morning. And Lord, as we come before you, you know, you are a good God. You're merciful God. You're loving God. And you came and you laid down your life. Father, you sent your son Jesus out of your great love and mercy for mankind. And Lord, even Jesus coming, he had to die, which was not a pretty thing. It wasn't a pleasant thing. We may even, if we had been standing out there or, or watching when he was uh, flogged and, and they scourged him and they beat him, you know, we would probably look at that and say, that is so horrible. It was horrible. It was a horrible death. It was horrible, the punishment he went through. But that which he went through was for the goodness, for our goodness. 
So many times, difficult things that we may not want to deal with, we don't want to look at, we don't want to talk about. In God, in Christ, it can be for our good, it can be for our profit, for our benefit. So Lord, let us not be a people when we hear or see difficult words, like we're getting ready to start talking about racism and hate and bigotry and prejudice, that we as the people of God, that we don't turn it off. We say, you know, I don't want to hear about that. I just want to hear about blessing and goodness and Jesus saving. But we must realize, Jesus had to go through the most difficult death. He had to face persecution like none other for our redemption. So sometimes to get through the good, to get to the good, we have to deal with the difficult. So again, your people, ears to hear, even those who are not saved, maybe, uh, or don't believe in God, maybe they're agnostic, atheists, or wherever it may be, unchurched, and those from another religion uh, that they might hear, or they might be watching, or may watch, that they give them ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is trying to say to all mankind about this subject of hate, the subject of racism. And bigotry. And Lord, as we hear your word, Lord, move me out of the way that people may hear you, what you're saying. Yes, Lord. That will bring forth deliverance. That will bring forth healing. Even deal with it in our own lives. To expose it and let repentance come. Let us have remorse and repentance and turning away. Yes, Lord. Not only for our own selves, but for the benefit of others. As you lay down your life for us. In that same mind. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right. So we're going to start with part one today. And again, we're talking about freedom from hate, racism, and bigotry. You could probably throw other words in there like prejudice as well. But those are the words the Lord gave me. Uh, hate, racism, and bigotry. And again, I don't hope you, if you're watching, you're in the room, you don't turn. Because you're not turning me off. And to receive what the Word of God says. This is not going to be Rod's opinion. This is going to be God's Word. Amen. So I don't want to interject any of me. I want to give you what God's Word says. And you know what's kind of interesting in this day? That since, you know, COVID last year, it brought out a lot. And I won't go into great detail because I think we know all of that. And what's come forth since the protest and what COVID did. Let me tell you something. Uh, you know, a lot of meanness, a lot of hatred, antagonism rose over the last year. We have to ask the question, why? Why did a spirit, and I'm going to say what it is from the beginning, we'll get to this more, but is a spirit of hate, a spirit of racism, bigotry, prejudice, and antagonism, and, and, and just meanness has risen even in the camp of God. And so we need to deal with it. We need to ask why is it happening so that we may be healed. We need to look at individual, even myself. So we all need to deal with this and not say, well, you know, I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to talk about it. Because that's even something in itself. Why don't we want to talk about it? Why don't we want to deal with it? And even right now, you know, there's uh, the talk of CRT, uh, critical race theory, and people are speaking against that, marching. There's those who are pro for it and those who are against it. And I want to say this from a spiritual aspect. And, you know, people say, why, why is people talking about all this? I, and I don't want to deal with this. Obviously, God's got his thumb on it. And he wants us to deal with it. I want to say us. I say us, the body of Christ. Because we are supposed to be the light of the world. So we need to put God's light on it. And not, you know, be like an ostrich and put our head in the ground. And, and want to avoid it and things like that. No, we need to be up front as God's people and deal with it, and not deal with it in our own flesh, not in our own mindset, but based on His Word, and that's what we're going to begin to do. So in James 2, 1 through 13, we're going to read this passage, and you're going to hear some things, and again, I'm going to take my time, we're not going to take a long time today, I just want to get the introduction part of this, again, freedom from hate, racism, and bigotry. So, again, James 2, 1 through 13 says, My brethren, now listen, he starts out speaking to the people of God. He says, My brethren, my brethren, do not hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with partiality. 
Verse 2, and that's the key word that partiality we're going to deal with. For if there should come into your assembly a man with gold rings and fine apparel, and there should also come in a man in filthy, a poor man in filthy clothes, and you pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes, and say to him, You sit here in a good place. And say to the poor man, You stand there, or sit here at my footstool. footstool. Verse 4, have you not shown partiality among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Verse 5, listen, my beloved brother, has God not chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor man. Do not the rich oppress. Pay attention to these passages, everyone. Do not the rich oppress you and drag you into the courts. Verse 7, do they not blaspheme that noble name by which you are called? And he's talking about the body of Christ, the people of God. Verse 8, if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You do well. But if you show partiality, listen to what he says about it. You commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. Verse 10, for whoever shall keep the whole law, yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. So he's saying we can do good and gracious things, do, you know, feed the hungry, clothe the naked, but then we have partiality. It is sin. And then really he's saying those other things don't count if you're doing that. It says, for he who said do not commit adultery, this is verse 11, also said do not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but you do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So what they're saying is this. I can't lift up one state of righteousness or doing good and, you know, I'm for this good cause and I'm, and I'm about this in terms of the word of God and righteousness. But yet I disobey in this other area. God is saying you're guilty of all. Mm -hmm. So understand that. So what I'm saying is, hey, you can say, well, you know what? I haven't cheated on my husband or wife, but I hate people of different groups. I don't like, guess what? You're not doing something sinful. It's just washed away by your hatred for other people. Dislike. So verse 12, so speak and do as those who will be judged by the law of liberty or the law of freedom. For judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy, listen, triumphs over judgment. And so I want to give you the definition because in that passage, the word partiality is used twice. And this is what we're going to use uh, as a main uh, definition right out of the gate. When he's talking about partiality, that we're not to have be partial towards people. And the Greek meaning of this means to have respect of persons or disrespect. Of persons. And it also means favoritism. The fault, this next part of this definition, the fault of one who, when called on to give judgment, listen, has respect of the outward circumstances of a person, which could be their look, their uh, socioeconomic place in life, where they work, their family. You can have respect or disrespect because of where people come from, their race, culture, and background, have hatred toward them. And it says, uh, has respect of the outward circumstances of an individual or group and not to their intrinsic merits. Intrinsic, but what God's put in them. And so prefers, that's part of what this part of you prefer some people over others as deeming themselves or their particular, but more worthy. In other words, saying, you know, the group I come from is more well worthy or better or we're superior than your group or that group. And this would also mean giving preface to those who are rich, it says, and high-born or disrespect because you consider them low-born or what side of the tracks they come from or what country they come from or what language they speak. That's partiality. And to another who we do not deem, we would, it says, to, to another who does not have the qualities we think that they should have as a person or someone we would respect. So that's partiality is what that is. So, see, here's the thing about this. And remember, James began, he says, brethren. 
He starts off, he says, My brethren, do not hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord God, with partiality, what we just read. In other words, so in the camp of God, the people of God, we should not have partiality. And what we're talking about in this series, that means we should not have hatred. We should not have racism or bigotry towards anyone. See, God would not have inspired James to write this. The Holy Spirit would not have inspired James to write this about partiality if it were not possible among those of us who claim to be followers of Jesus. Now, I wish I could say in doing this message that only unbelievers, people who don't know Jesus, have this problem. But I can say honestly and even know that there are people who are atheists who are agnostic, who are not Christians, who don't walk in hate, who don't have racial problems, or have bigotry. So this is not even a necessarily a Christian, non-Christian thing. And we're going to talk about it. it's a creator God thing. But a definitely Christians, God's people, the people of life, should not walk in any of this. So we're going to get free from it. The sadness of racism, I said this a few weeks ago, you know, we talk about how bad racism is, and hatred, and bigotry, and prejudice, how bad it is, how awful it is, and how evil it is, and we'll talk about it. But you know what I've come up Racism, hate, bigotry, prejudice is sad. It's one of the saddest forms of sin that can ever come upon mankind. And I'll give this example, because I shared this a few weeks ago. There was a lady, uh, she was Caucasian, and there was a statue, and I'm not going to go into the details of what the statue was and all this, but she began to deface that statue of a black man. And she had no problem. She was very mean, very coarse. Uh, she gave her name, her address. She absolutely did not care. And she said after she spray painted this statue of the black man and, and I'm not going to, she cursed and said some very ugly things and she said, uh, I have always been prejudiced against blacks and Hispanics. And when I heard that, I, I wasn't mad at the lady. I, you know, I, I didn't shake my fist when I saw the video. My thought was, how sad. That she had to espouse that I have always had prejudice when she did hate, dislike. And my question was in my heart was, if I could have talked to her, was to say, ma'am, why do you feel this way? Why did this come upon you? What was done that you hate, dislike this group of people? And so this morning with that, to be free from it, if you are even a person of the body of Christ or you're not a believer, if you have any, if you have hatred toward anyone, that may be in a different culture, maybe somebody in your family. Why do you have it? Where did it come from? Why do you persist in it? It's sad because here's the thing about hate, racism, and bigotry. Why it's so sad. You've heard this analogy before. I've used it before. It's like drinking poison, hoping that the other person will die. Amen. Hate, yes. racism, and bigotry is killing you, yes. not the persons that you dislike. Right. It's killing you. It's bringing bitterness, stress, torment. And we'll talk about this over this series because it's sad because it's killing you and the thing about it what's so sad about it even there are groups that have labels for themselves being you know haters and racists and bigots where it is a badge of honor and i want to ask them what is it doing for you how is it progressing you in life what do you expect to get from it? What are the rewards for being a hater? What are the rewards for being racist? What are the rewards for being a bigot, a racist? 
an antagonist, a terrorist. Going back to the believers, you cannot truly, listen, believe in God, especially the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the creator of all things, and particularly mankind, and be a racist, a bigot, a hater, have any kind of hatred that despise any other people, race, culture, or nationality, or language. Why? Because God created everybody. The truth of the matter is, if you have hatred, Racist beliefs and thoughts and practices and bigoted ways. You do not know the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we're going to talk about that. You cannot. Because this God created every human being and loves every human being. He may not like our ways, but that's why he sent Jesus. That shows it's even greater. He didn't despise certain groups. He sent Jesus for everybody. But let me tell you this. This is another reason why you and I should not have hatred towards any group of people. Because Acts 17, 26 lays it down. And he, being God, has made from one blood every nation. Did you, did you get that? Every nation of men to dwell on the face of the earth. Every human being God made them. Amen. And has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings. If I read no other scripture. He said from one blood. Now one that would be Adam. And then all the people. You know God wiped them away in the flood. But then there's Noah. If you don't trace it back to Adam. You can at least trace it back to Noah. Then he says from one blood. At least it's Adam or Noah. Every nation of people. Of mankind, race, culture. He put them on the face of the earth. Amen. So how can we hate, despise, have racist beliefs and thoughts and prejudice and bigotry, animosity, claim to know God, claim to love God, and hate people from other different groups when God made every life? Mm -hmm. From one book. The truth here's the truth. The blood that runs in every human being, irregardless of their covering, of their culture, we all have the same blood. Because it's saying right there, our blood, your blood, would trace all the way back to at least Noah and even further back to Adam. Mm -hmm. Now let me define racism, bigotry, and hatred. Or hatred, racism, and bigotry, in that order. But let me give you the definition of hatred. And again, we're going to discuss a little bit today. I don't want to overwhelm you because I know this is a very difficult subject. But guess what? Again, when it comes to the things of God, there are difficult things that we have to deal with. And as the children of light, we must know and understand these things that we be delivered and that we can help deliver others and they may receive the good news. Because this is a barrier for people. This is a barrier for people in the body of Christ. So hatred means intense dislike or ill will. Intense hostility and aversion usually deriving, listen, this is where hate comes from. Fear, anger, or a sense of injury. We fear groups of people because of beliefs that we may have. Anger, because maybe we experience something, or maybe not, and we heard about somebody else's story. Or we believe that we're going to be hurt. So we have an extreme dislike or disgust. It can even happen in your own family. Racism means prejudice, discrimination, or antagonism. Listen, antagonism actually means active hostility or opposition. And believe me, there are people right now that wake up every morning and they're hostile toward other people. They wake up. Thinking of how they can torment other people, other groups. That's why they become part of a group that's a hater. Racist. They even have pride about it. So they're active in hostility. And it means prejudice, discrimination, or antagonism directed against a person or people groups on the basis of their membership in a particular racial or ethnic group. Typically one that is a minority or marginalized. Mm -hmm. 
The second part of this means that believe that different races possess distinct characteristics, abilities, or qualities, especially so as to distinguish them as either inferior or superior to one another. So racism brings out this thought that some groups are lower and some groups are higher or better for whatever reason. But let me take you back to Acts 17, 1, 17 26. That can't be true because from one blood, God made all men. Hmm. So where did the racism come from? If God made everybody, hmm. and everybody has the same blood in them, we just got different shapes. We come from different parts of the world. And again, it says in Acts 17, 26, has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on the face of earth. We're supposed to be here. Hmm. He put everybody on the planet. It shouldn't be a problem. I got a problem with those people that live born in Spain. I got a problem with the people that live in Asia. I got a problem with the people that live in Africa. I got a problem with the people that live in America. Here's the question, why? Because God put everybody on the planet. Yes. Why is there a problem? We're going to talk about why and where it comes from. And then the word bigotry means obstinate or unreasonable attachment to a belief, opinion, or faction. In particular, prejudice against a person or people on the basis of their membership of a particular group. So we just can't, and again, this can be people in the body of Christ, because it does exist. That there are believers, there are Christians, there are followers of Jesus who have this problem. Even the disciples, we'll talk about this in another part of this year, where disciples even held on to hatred, racism, and bigotry toward other groups of people. Hmm. Proclaiming the gospel, they got a problem with other people. So bigotry means I have a belief about a group. Don't know whether it's true or not. A lot of times it's passed down and it says, well, you know, all green people are like this. And all yellow people, you know, they do this. The purple people, they talk like this. That's what bigotry is. Don't know if it's true. It's just been passed down. Mom and Daddy taught you that about purple people. Brother told you about you know, orange people. And from then on, you pass on and it becomes a habit that you and I have. By the way, hatred, we'll get into the spiritual depth of it, but hatred, racism, and bigotry, oftentimes, and I'll say this about, this only thing I'm going to say about the critical race theory thing is this. Whether it's systematic or not, it's definitely a habit. I want to encourage you, read the book, the Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. Because some of the beliefs and stuff that we have, some of the things we do when it comes to hate, racism, bigotry, and prejudice is a habit that we picked up and we've been passing on and we just keep doing it. We don't even know we're doing it because habits are something we don't even think about. We've been conditioned and we just do it. Mm. And you may not even necessarily have hatred in your heart necessarily toward a bigger group, but because of what you've been taught and what you've been practiced, when you see that group of people, you react a certain way. It's a habit. We gotta break the habit. We gotta get free. Hatred, listen, is a very angry emotional response to certain people or ideas. Like even me talking about this subject. There may be people even reading, and the fact that, oh my God, he's gonna talk about hatred and racism and bigotry. And guess what swallowed hatred even about it? Strong emotional response. And we have to ask, why are we reacting that way? Hatred is often associated, listen, with intense feelings of anger and disgust. I'm going to say that one more time. Hatred is often associated with intense feelings of anger and disgust. And here's the problem. Anger is killing you and I. Disgust is bringing bitterness to you and I. My wife and I have worked in the healthcare business for many years, the healthcare systems. And I'll tell you this, even when I was a patient advocate, even when I was a, uh, leading the chaplaincy, being our chaplain, I would talk to people and I could hear their hatred. Mm. Their disgust for other people. I know I mean, walk in rooms, they have the chaplain come and they call our chaplain as soon as they see my face. Mm. Rather than me seeing someone to come to help them, because they had a hatred or dislike 
of black people for whatever, it was a turn off to them. Could not receive. But if they knew Acts 17 26, they could receive it. Now let me be clear that hatred for another group is not just against people of other races and cultures. So I'm going to help some people out. Let me let the boom off of some people. Let me get another squeeze. Because even as I talk about it in your mind, you know, start swelling, you know, it can happen and maybe even the enemy get involved. And as I talk about this and, and you know, pictures of stuff, maybe stuff that's happened to you or you start thinking about groups of people and you may start even thinking, you know, well, that's why, you know, I don't like people. I don't like Asians. You know, I don't, you know, I don't like Spanish people. I don't like Native American. I don't like black. I don't like white. It brings that up. And if it doesn't come out, we push it back down. But it will and can come out somewhere. And we want to get free from it. Amen. And our freedom comes from Jesus Christ. Amen. But we've got to expose it. But again, I want to be clear that hatred for other groups of people is not just for people of other races and cultures. I kind of mentioned it. It can happen in families. Yeah. It can happen with people that look like us live right across the street. Yeah. People we work with look just like us, come from the same background, and we can have intense hatred for them. One of the most famous feuds and war of this would be the Hatfields and McCoys. There's been many plays and uh, shows and movies about the Hatfields and the McCoys. And guess what? They were both Caucasian. They were not different races. The Hatfields and McCoys had one of the most famous feuding and hatred and deaths and killings between them. And they were the same race and the same culture. I'm going to read something I pulled off of the internet. But the Hatfield and McCoy feud, because I'm talking about it can happen with people of the same group. The Hatfields and McCoy were described by journalists as the Hatfield and McCoy War. It involved two rural, listen, rural white American families of the West Virginia, Kentucky area along the Tug Fork. I'm not familiar with these places of the Big Sandy River. In the years between 1863 and 1891, the Hatfields of West Virginia were led by a man by the name of William Anderson. And guess what his nickname was? Devil Ants. His, that was his nickname. Now that lets you know that probably wasn't a nice guy. If you're, you put devil in your name or you're called devil, you're a pretty bad boy. While the McCoys of Kentucky were under the leadership of Randolph Old Ram McCoy, those involved in the feud were descended from Joseph Hatfield and William McCoy. And we're talking about the feud, the war, and this was between people that look alike. Same background. The feud would has entered the American folklore, it says, lexicon as a metonym for any bitterly feuding rival party. This metonym means that gives an example of intense hate and rivalry and war. The McCoy family lived mostly on the Kentucky side of the Tug Four. The Hatfields lived mostly on the West Virginia side, so they had sides. They had a geographical difference. The majority of the Hatfields, although living in Mingo County, then part of what was called Logan County, fought for the Confederacy. Okay, here comes another difference there. Fought for the Confederacy in the American Civil War. Most McCoys also fought for the Confederacy, so they fought kind of along the same side. With the exception of Asa Harmon McCoy, who fought for the Union. Uh oh. The first real violence, and notice this was the article said, the first real violence in the feud was the death of Asa as he returned from war. Remember, Asa fought for the Union, and most of the Hatfields and McCoys fought for the Confederates. He was murdered by a group of Confederate home guards called the Logan Wildcats. Devil Ains Hatfield was a suspect at first. I would have thought he was too with that name. But was later confirmed to have been sick at home at the time of the murder. It was widely believed that his uncle, Jim Vance, a member of the Wildcats, committed the murder. The Hatfields were more, listen, this is another difference. They the same background. So the difference we have mainly here is, is this. One side was from Kentucky, one side was from West Virginia. But they were both Caucasian. Most fought for the Confederacy, one did, at least from the history here. So that was a problem. The Hatfields were more affluent than the McCoys. Uh-oh, socioeconomic difference. But they looked the same, same backgrounds. 
Then because and politically well connected. So the happiest were more fluent, were more politically well connected. You not notice, see, these are things that bring differences. Wealth, nothing wrong with wealth, but you get a wrong attitude and think you're better. Remember what the examples we gave of racism, bigotry, and hatred? It can be a divider. If you don't have the spirit of Christ. Politically well connected. See, we that problem is still going today. We even use politics to even think that we're better. Even though we can look the same. So it's not just different race, different culture. Jesus helped us. Ace temperate operation was a source of wealth for his family. And while the McCoys were more of a low, listen, lower middle class family. Old ran on the 300 acre farm. Both families had been involved in the manufacturing and selling the illegal moonshine. So they even had an illegal business going on. Both of them. A popular commodity at the time. And it's hinting at here that maybe have been some rivalry about moonshine. And you say, well, Pastor, why are you bringing that out about the Hatfields and McCoys? Because racism, hatred, and bigotry is not just from people of two different groups. You can have hatred for people that look just like you, come from the same background, and it's still wrong. And we as believers, if we have any of it, we need to repent. Amen. We need to come to Jesus and get delivered. See, sadly, there has been great hatred, racism, and pe- prejudice, and bigotry between groups that name the name of Christ. Baptists versus Pentecostals. Church of Christ versus Charismatics. I mean, hatred. Methodists versus Mennonites. And then, of course, religious differences, where you've got got wars and hatred and dislike between religions, Jews versus Christians, Muslims versus Jews, Hindus versus Christians, and even down to today, listen, politically motivated Christians versus biblically motivated Christians. Help us, Jesus. In speaking of the followers of Jesus, and again, this is where we need to come back to. We've got to come back to Jesus. Because if He is our freedom, Amen. if we did not, well, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't hate people. Even sometimes our reaction when we hear the word racism, it's like a little, like a little ping that goes off. Like, why are we getting so emotional and we have to be so, well, I'm not racist. I'm not a hater. I'm not a bigot. Can we be fair and honest? We're human beings. We have all at one time. Maybe there's somebody watching, somebody in the room, maybe it hasn't happened. God bless you if it happened. But maybe you haven't been a hater. Or maybe you have. Maybe you haven't been racist towards a group. But I can tell you that probably most of us have picked up some form of bigotry in our belief system and it's a habit mm-hmm. and we say things and in the first word is an example is we put the word all in front of it well you know all green people well you know all purple people well you know them uh, purple people they talk like this And as we get ready to close out today, I'm getting ready to close it here. Because I want to close it on a positive note. But you have to catch yourself from the habit of using the word all. Mm-hmm. And some of them. Because Jesus said, and this is what I wanted to say. Just give me a few more minutes on this. And speaking of the followers of Jesus. When it comes to hate, when it comes to racism and bigotry, have we picked up something that Jesus, I'm talking to the body of Christ, have we picked up something that Jesus warned us not to be when it comes to hating those we don't like? This is why we got to get back to the Word of God. My wife and I, the number one thing we can do, man, we, we can do a lot of stuff, but if you and I do not get the Word of God, to renew our minds. That's our number one thing. That's the number one thing God called us to Cortez for was to give people the word of God. I could hand out apples. Nothing wrong with apples. 
I could spend all night with you in a, in a counseling session. But if you don't have the Word of God, if you're not taught and received it, and your mind's not being renewed, your heart's not being changed, all that other stuff, is, it does amount to nothing. Because you could feed the poor. You could call the naked. You could visit people in prison, and guess what? Have a little bit of bigotry, dislike, even while you're among them. But here's what Jesus said in Matthew 5, 43-44. You have heard it said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Now I'm afraid as we close out for today, part one, that many in the camp of God, people of God, Christians, have adopted the hate your enemy mantra. I've said it over the last several weeks. And we've got to get free from this. And I'm going to warn you as a believer, you're watching, you're in the room. Mm -hmm. If you hear any believer, if you hear any preacher, prophet, I don't care how popular, how great their show is, how many people they watch, and they even hint at, hint at hate, despising, getting rid of, by the way, I actually mentioned this before, there was actually, I've heard pastors who were saying that people should be executed. Mm, I'm not kidding you. I could call out their name, but I'm not going to do it. Jesus. They are espousing hatred towards other people. And here's what Jesus said about it. And I'm going to go with Jesus. Because he's my Savior. Amen. He's my Lord. He's my God. I'm going to go with what he says. I'm not going to go with Reverend so and so and prophet this or that. Because they are wrong. Mm -hmm. Jesus is right. He's the one that laid down his life. They're not laying down their life. He said, but I say to you, and I say to you what Jesus is saying, if you're watching or going to watch, if you have this about you, but I say to you, love your enemies. Mm -hmm. Bless those who curse you. Some of you, all of a sudden you got hit. Dang, what's what you heard? Hey, oh my goodness. And it kind of goes like this. Let me finish the script. But I say, love your enemies. Yeah. Bless those who curse you. Some of you say, I know I won't. Do good to those who hate you. Don't hate back. Do good. And here's the thing about this group. It's something you have to be intentional. Somebody curse you. Call you a name because of your background, your race, or whatever. You love them back. Amen. Do good to those who hate you. Yeah. You're driving down the road and somebody calls you this or you that or whatever. Don't put, put up a middle finger and do all that stuff. You know, just give them a smile and say, God bless you. Amen. Because, you know, you'll stir up a problem. Some people looking for, like I said, remember, there are groups of people who hate is their mantra. They're looking for a reason. They're looking for a fight. Mm -hmm. Don't give them one as a children of light. Amen. Do good to those who hate and pray yes. for those who spitefully use you and persecute. When was the last time you went into prayer and asked God to bless your enemy? Mm -hmm. To do good to you instead of going to God, cut them down, kill them. <laughs> kill them all. Oh my God. Mm. And I'm going to hit this really at home and before we go. We'll get to the next one. But I say this to the body of Christ. Because remember I gave that at the end about there's hatred. Racism, you know, because racism isn't just about color and culture, but it can be within the group. Remember the Hatfields and McCoys. There's the politically motivated Christian versus the biblically motivated Christian. There's a, unfortunately, there's a war going on. But we now have Christians. As soon as they hear somebody's of a different political group, hatred, animosity, antagonism. You're a whatever, you're a D and you're an R. And I'm a C and, and you're an L. I don't like you. You're not a real Christian because you are part of this group. Now wait a minute, we don't do that. Our earthly determinations of righteousness do not equal the word of God. We cannot label somebody a Christian or non-Christian because they belong to a certain group. That's wrong. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. that, is, that is wrong. Because you have certain... Remember I gave the example that when, when James talked about it, you, if you are like pro certain things which are biblical, but you are anti certain other things, guess what? None of it counts. In other words, I'll give an example. I'm going to give this one. You can be pro-abortion, but you don't like people of certain racial groups that don't count. You all the way wrong, period. That's what James said. I believe in the righteousness of God and His love, but I hate poor people. They're lazy, you know, they don't want to work. Guess what? Your righteousness declaration, God doesn't even see that anymore. Mm -hmm. Renew our minds, Lord. Free us. As yes. I go, I want this, I want to lighten this just a little bit as we go. Mm. Jesus said, again, it is said, and unfortunately I believe this has come back and it's coming to the camp of God, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But he said, I said you love your enemies. Bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray to those who spitefully use you and persecute you. An example would be, you know, and this will help because I don't want to, you know, end on this show, but I want to end it a little bit, lighten a little bit, but, you know, there's a war going on between cat people, dog people, and bird people. You know, cat people don't like dog people, dog people don't like the bird people, the bird people don't like the, you know, the people, the, the cat people say, I don't know, the cat people say, I don't know why anybody want a dog. You know, dogs are missing. They're almost like little children. Cats, you're independent. Why would anybody want to know? And those bird people, don't, you know, those birds are chirping all night. They got parrots talking. I think as a person, I just absolutely hate bird people. Oh, dog people, the dogs are pooping all over the place. I'm stepping in it. Oh, I hate dog people. Oh, I hate cat people. That cat, that hair. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I live next to a cat person. I can't stand them. All oh, those bird people. That guy walks around with that berry on his shoulder. Ah! And then there's... Imagine, I know that there's not people living on Mars. And I know there's not people living on Venus. But imagine if there were. How would they look at planet Earth right now? How would Martians see Earthlings? Oh my goodness. Those earth people, they're always fighting. But then they have a problem with the Venusians, the people from Venus. Oh, your planet is so tiny. How many of you live on that little tiny, and you're so close to the sun? You people are burnt. Man, I think you're a different color. You know, Martians were red. <laughs> and you Venusians, you are so dark. <laughs> because, you know, you guys are so close. How do you do it? And those earthlings with their little green planet. Well, they think they're so special. You know, our rocks are better here on Mars. <laughs> you know, us Venusians, you know, yes, we have darker skin. Yes, and we're closer, so we got all the heat. And those earthlings with their little ships, they're just now getting the space. You know, us Martians, we've been, um, you know, for a long time. They're so, you know, earth people are so low. Your technology is bad. Do you get what I'm getting at? Yeah. Father, deliver us. Yes, Lord. We're not Martians. Jesus. We're not Ven Venusians. We're not from Venus. You put everybody on this planet. And we'll talk about this next week while we're sharing with you. But that you made every human being, you created everything, you said it was good. So that means every person is good. And the proof of that is that you sent your son. Mm -hmm. Because you said in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Mm -hmm. And that who else who serve should believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting Jesus. life. He said he didn't come to condemn the world, but that the world through him right. would be saved. And so the mindset of every believer should be I love everybody on this planet, irregardless of their lifestyle, irregardless of where they're from, what their skin color is, how they talk, their language is different. I love them because God loves them and God created them. Amen. So, Lord, free us from hatred. Yes, Lord. Free us yes. from any racist 
beliefs yes. or patterns or behaviors. Yes, Lord. Why deliver us from bigotry? Why help us to watch our speech? Help us to question why we think certain things about certain groups. Even that look like us. We could be black and have certain thoughts and patterns about other black people. We could be white and have certain thoughts about other white people because of the state they come in, their socioeconomic background, mm -hmm. where they work, who their family was, and have hatred and bitterness and dislike yes. for them. The car they drive, the silliest of things. Hatred. Because we don't deem somebody as Christian as we are. Well, they don't do things the way we do. And then we may say things like, you know, if you were really a Christian, if you were really a Baptist or a Methodist, hmm. but we're not the ones to determine that. We don't know. Jesus. You look on the heart. Yeah. You know every each and every individual. Yes, Lord. You know what makes them tick. You know what, and each of us in this room are watching. God knows you. Everybody doesn't know you. They may know something about you mm. and I, yeah. but you, God, know stuff about us we don't even know. Mm. We don't even know why we do what we do sometimes, good and bad. Mm -hmm. But you know, and if we will come to the Creator, yeah. if we'll come to the Master, and ask Him, why do I have? These feelings, these thoughts of hatred and racism and bigotry and prejudice against people. God, expose it. God, break it out of me. I don't want to be a follower of you and have this stuff. I want to love everybody like you. Yes, Lord. Heal me now. Yes, Lord. Expose it. Shine your light on it. And when you do, Lord, help us to repent. Right then, yes. right there. Yes. Lord Jesus, take it away. Yes. And as we close today, maybe you're watching and you're not a believer. So, well, you know, I'm not even a Christian. I don't, I don't know, but let me tell you something. God created every human being, even your mom and your dad. You may have animosity against them right now. Maybe you have a certain form of prejudice. And you may be because you weren't raised, you know, um, you didn't have a father then. And, and you have a problem with people who have fathers. You have a problem with people who have a mom and dad. You 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 think that you have ill will against people who have used to have a good family, come from a good family. You have a problem with people with money, or you have a problem with people that don't have money, and you look just like them. But you develop these things. I say to you, atheist, agnostic, unbeliever, unchurched, God loves you. He doesn't want that in you. Amen. He wants to purge it from you. Yes, Lord. He wants to heal you. Because hatred for anyone, racism, prejudice, mm. bigotry, remember, it's not hurting them. It's hurting you. Mm. Be healed today. And receive Jesus and let the healing process begin. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So, as we cover part two next week, I'm going to talk about the spiritual roots of hatred, racism, mm -hmm. and bigotry, and shine some light on that. So, we thank you today. If you're in the room, or you know, we bless you, we pray for you, and again, we pray for healing in that area, and even healing in any other area of your life. In Jesus' name, thank you, thank you, thank you, amen.